for um, good evening, everyone. For the site plan application for Brooks Pond Road, three seventeen map three seventeen parcel eight A independent living facility. This is the open public meeting. Six thirty one will open up the public hearing for the special permit for use uh, um, for Brooks Pond Road, same map and parcel number, independent living facility. to uh, redevelop the area, uh, pr pretty much create a straight shot extension of the uh, driveway system to provide access to 23 uh, parking spaces for the facility. Uh, based on the use of the uh, building, we need uh, 20 required parking spots. Uh, we're providing 23, so it's a little bit in excess of the required parking. Um, access will provide a, a new concrete sidewalk that will provide access to, to the building. Um, along with the various uh, landscaping provisions that's required by the ordinance. Uh, relative to utilities, um, as I said before, there is an existing detention basin on the back portion of the site. Um, that basin is currently designed to accommodate a certain amount of flow, but as part of this overall redevelopment, we're increasing the capacity within the basin uh, so that we can provide additional storage capacity within the stormwater system to account for this project as well as the following hearing for lot 9A itself. Um, work will include the redirection of some of the uh, drainage lines around the building in order to discharge into the new basin, as well as the applicable uh, sewer and water connections to the existing infrastructure within uh, this parking lot area. Um, with that being said, uh, we did receive department head comments um, and we have responded to them. Unfortunately, it was only this morning that this was sent out, uh, but if the report is more than willing, I can easily run through the comments on uh, how we address the different service. Um, sure. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, so, uh, directly from the planning director, uh, one of the outstanding comments uh, relative to section 2245.1.4 uh, indicating the species of post plantings. Uh, right now, um, showing deciduous trees um, that will be two and a half inches in caliper, four feet above the ground. Uh, typically, these trees are uh, that of maple or oaks or some form of that kind of a tree. Uh, so we've dictated that uh, these would be deciduous trees of that kind of nature. Uh, relative to dumpster screening and access, uh, this proposed project won't require any additional or any proposed uh, Dumpster pads themselves. Uh, refuse from these, uh, the tenants is collected internally and brought to another uh, dumpster facility located on the property to be disposed of appropriately. Uh, so it's because of the nature of the use being the assisted living facility, there's really no need to have a standing uh, dumpster pad on the site. It's uh, accommodated via staff. Um, additional comments uh, relative to police and fire review, which uh, were further reviewed within. Uh, relative to lighting, uh, there's no proposed additional pole-mounted lights on the site uh, due to the 
in close proximity to the parking area. Uh, there are several access and uh, wall tack lines surrounded by the building for security purposes. But at this point in time, there's no intent to provide any further uh, pole mounted lighting. If in the future that is determined that to be necessary, uh, we will comply with all the required uh, provisions within the ordinance for light spill and light intensities. Um, Subsequent comments on the Biology Commission, uh, Conservation Commission. Uh, we are within jurisdictional areas, so that uh, filing is forthcoming with the commission itself. Uh, additional comments relative to landscaping requirements for sections 2255 and 62.3. Um, again, we're just showing addition, or additional notations for the deciduous trees themselves. Uh, we should also note that we are requesting a waiver from the requirement for a landscape in, uh, architect uh, to prepare the plan uh, due to its relatively minor nature and how it's kind of uh, surrounded by existing development. Uh, for showing the uh, provisions for the additional landscaping trees around the parking zone, we feel that should be sufficient. The main concern is over the age the building inspector. Could you just want to talk to that? Yes, so that was one of the best <coughs> earlier comments relative to the uh, densities and the land uses. Uh, but he filed a subsequent review on May 25th where we addressed all of his comments. And that includes parking and yes. the subdivision plan. Yeah. And does it have a total unit count? 21. Chris? Uh, 21 units. 21 units for this, but I mean, the whole project looks on. Do we have a total count on that? Because wasn't there so many units? We could do all together. We're just trying to get an idea where we are unit wise and what the council would like. Yeah. And then the also the uh, the open area, the open acreage that was required for the agricultural layout piece, that's all. Um let me let me take Peter Bovenzi and Bill say um to explain. Okay, so first let's sort of take it back a little bit. So on this particular site, on this location. We originally, the original approval had garages, and then those garages were not really desirable. And I came back to you, and we converted them to the units. I don't know if you remember this, but so those are this is um, uh, so the existing buildings that were there were converted to apartments, and so we then started working with the assisted living. Um, People and we decided that the, the garden style apartments, which used a certain same amount of land, so all this area is paved, there's buildings there, etc. And so what we're going to do, we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that and we're converting it to this other other use. So it kind of, um, it's not like this is open area land. We're actually within, in both of these buildings are in the same thing. They're on areas that were previously approved for other types. Of, de of development within the development and we changed that. We came back to you and we submitted to you like a, what I refer to as like a pork chop plot. Yes. The reason we did that was that the zoning requires is it, is it to be a different lot. And when we subtracted that land from the Brooks Pond development, we also subtracted units from the Brooks Pond development. And so we're in compliance with the Brooks Pond development in all of that and, and the ability to put this on. We did a traffic analysis um, you know, of the development. In fact, I think to sort of summarize to the end, there was only four additional cars at peak times between the previously approved and, the, and this revised plan. One of the things I want to point out uh, earlier is that while it doesn't have any part, it's not really part of this, but I'd like to sort of talk about a little bit about the front. In the front, for example, in, and you can see it in your brochure, I sent you the brochure, and if you open it up, you'll see a section about Four Brooks Pond. Four Brooks, Brooks Pond was a 32 unit approved building in the front, which we reduced to 17 units. So there, we actually subtracted 15 units from that particular building because in, in closer analysis, we found that what was happening was that the, that the people that wanted these units want, didn't want small units, even though they're technically 
one bedrooms they they wanted lodging and so if you look at the architectural plans of these you have basically a bedroom and then a den and um so they're they're larger square footage wise but they meet a demand that we have you know for this type of unit um the ranch units were successful we ended up building a few of them they were successful but we feel that this is better a better use and more demand for that um i could get into i'll be happy to answer all your questions but so um so we ended up eliminating nine ranches 15 uh units in the front of building four so one of the buildings is really just a configure reconfiguration of um of units that we're basically eliminating it's it's not and then, um, you know, so what we're doing is we're trying to make it more compatible with the demand. Um, we think this is a better, better way of doing it. Um, in terms of, we, we're going to have to go to conservation. We're hoping to get the approval tonight and then subject to conservation approval. We can't do this unless they do. So we understand that. It's, there's no, um, you know, um, we have, run into some delays um, you know with engineering and what we've been working on um, and um, and personally you know, I, I I take some responsibility for it because I've been changing but so I tweaked it and I didn't want as many minutes one of the things that was brought up I think rightly by Elizabeth was that um, the heading on the architectural drawing said 25 units and then the actual plan is 21 units we reduced it, but we have looked at different components. Again, we have assisted living, which is allowed in the commercial, and this is now in the in, in the residency district, which is allowed by special permit. But there are some different zoning considerations. One of the zoning considerations is only being three stories, um, so we have to lower the building. Another consideration is that. In the residence C district, the, the, the parking has to be on the site owned by the actual builder. Even though this is a sort of a, a, a plan in which we own all the abutting land and etc., is actually a condition in C that doesn't apply to commercial. That the actual parking has to it cannot be like an easement five feet away. That is the reason the eight became eight A, and, and uh, nine became nine A, was simply to tweak the zoning line so that the required parking was on the actual site. It couldn't be a few feet off. Meanwhile, we have an abundance of parking that is in excess of what is required by zoning in the uh, adjacent campus. We don't really need any more parking. We, we, we have plenty of it there. And um, so those are the types of things. So the point I want to, a couple points is that this is a, a redraw, a redesign of an area that was already approved for units. In some areas of the site, we reduce the number of units. We don't come back to you to reduce the units, typically, you know. Um, but I'm willing to commit that. Or is going to be 17. If you look on your brochure, it's already under construction. It is 17. It's never going to be any more. And so we're really, you know, we're kind of putting the units, we've eliminated nine of the ranch units. We haven't really talked about that a little bit. But so, like, we, we ended up coming up with a plan that we think better sort of utilizes the land, provides the, the type of housing that is in demand. Like right now, we're, we're pushing 140 on the waiting list. If you drive by the development, you'll notice there are no development signs. The reason is, is that we can't, we have too, too many people. We can't even, and then every one of these families is a very important thing. So we think this is a good way to go. And um, there's some minor modifications and Retention areas and minor. In fact, if you look and read the reports, the retention ponds now are lower, the, high, the maximum heights are lower, etc. 
every little thing that we've looked at, the engineers have done a great job in really fitting these things in. They're designed to meet the exact specifications of the zoning exactly without, without any changes. We, did, we continue to ask so that Frank Provenzi do the, do the landscaping design. Um, this is something we've done since the beginning of the project. He's done a very good job. And, um, you know, um, we think it's a great addition. It's a, we are pushed, we are against the gun a little bit here. Well, so let's, let's, see, let's get the, the counts have actually gone down then. The unit counts have gone well, down. Although we've gone down and up, but it's marginally up. It's marginally down. up, so. Within, I'm just we're just trying to get well, idea. What's, right. what's the number, yeah. Peter? What's the how many? I don't know. Yeah. We don't know. You're talking ahead because this is not part of the deal. But here's right, the, right. Let, me, let me explain it this way. Yeah. There has been a there has been an ongoing debate. What's that? How many? Can you so, open the 638, 640? Oh yeah. Open yes, we're going to open up lot yeah. for yeah. the lot oh, 9A, 638, <coughs> the 638 <coughs> meeting, and the 640 <coughs> meeting. <coughs> So now we can talk about everything. Um, uh, yeah. so, uh, do you know what it is? Chris, we have one question. If I don't, Pete. It would be like yeah, asking what the other development is. Right. So, one of the things I would like to address with the can, can we, can, Mr. Benzi, can we kind of stay on track here? Because I, frankly, I've forgotten where. I think, I think Chris was in the middle of going through the department head comments right, right. and. Paul asked the question, and we get that right. I'm kind of like just to interject. Oh, excuse me. The, the count is in here, I believe, right? Yes, that was yeah. the first. I was just yeah, I'm just looking. Yeah. Okay, thank is you. That the yeah. new yeah. Is that the new signal from today? Yeah, that's from yes. today, right? Oh, okay. yes. Well, exactly. Then I wouldn't even have the question. Yeah. Uh, no, but we just got it. We haven't reviewed yeah. it. It was sitting here when we got here. That's all. So, all right. What is that? Oh, Let's uh, move on. That's good. I will thank circle you. around back to that comment in a moment. I'll keep yeah. going down my yes. Here. Uh, so we left off on comment 3A in our response uh, to uh, the board. Um, relative, this is again relative to the tree counts and sizing. Um, as I said earlier, we updated the notice of details to dictate that. Uh, comment 3D um, is relative to trying to save uh, the existing vegetation. Um, on lot 8A specifically, there's not a lot of standing vegetation that exists currently. Uh, with the exception of some trees near the railroad line itself. Um, by default, our general uh, process is to save as much as humanly practical, uh, which we have done as part of this, and we can provide additional landscape trees around the building itself again. Um, comment 3C is just an acknowledgement of a waiver request relative to the landscape architect being provided. Uh, comment 4 um, is relative to runoff, uh, stormwater runoff on the site. Uh, which we can go back to um, further comment when we get to the DPW comment about impacts. Comment number five, uh, providing 300 funding properties with 300 feet of the site location. Uh, we provided an addendum sketch uh, to uh, document the properties that are within 300 feet at the back of this review uh, letter. Um, comment number six is relative to easements and right-of-ways. Uh, it's confirming that there are all the easements and right-of-ways on the property that are shown in the plan. Comment number seven is relative to proposed signage. Um, there's no additional standing, uh, freestanding signs on the property, uh, with the exception of the uh, required uh, handicapped parking spots and any directional signs that are needed. And comment number eight is we uh, included the architectural renderings for this review, um, as Mr. Benzie stated. Um, the plan was changing constantly, but the layout and uh, appearance of the building remained intact. Uh, it's provided in the review. Uh, relative to the special permit review, um, further comment was required relative to 13.4, which is um, approval shall not uh, cause a substantial inconvenience or hazard to abutters, vehicles, and pedestrians. Um, when we submitted this plan originally, the traffic report was forthcoming. Um, and Shortly after submittal it was completed. Um, as part of the overall review, they looked at, we reviewed the original traffic counts for the original filing back in 2003 ish, I believe, um, and compared that to what is anticipated at this point in time. And as part of the overall development, there's a net reduction in um, vehicle trips from what was originally approved. So 
the original filing uh, way back when the developed project was first proposed, uh, there was a total of 2,800, a little more than 2,800 vehicle trips per day. With this revision, um, there'll be approximately a little bit more than 1,900 vehicle trips per day. So there's quite a bit of a drop still from the original design um, to what's currently proposed and active right now. Uh, so we anticipate that any inconveniences are well within the realm of uh, manageable based on the original design and approvals. And comment number two is just an acknowledgement of the landscape requirements and the way we're going on the actual review. Uh, for the uh, assessor's office, had no comment. Um, for the health, uh, post a question of a community room or kitchen. Uh, this building will not have one of those features. Um, and comment number two is relative to the construction area being maintained litter free, which is a standard requirement nowadays of all construction sites. So that is a more than uh, easy, easily achievable uh, task. Uh, building inspector, no comment uh, based on the review of May 25th, uh, which gets into the involvement of the unit accountants uh, doc and whatnot. And based on... No, we're just looking at something else and something that's in there. Thank you. Progress. Uh, conservation uh, requested the plant remain in trees. Uh, it's noted we can easily accommodate that as part of the design. Uh, DPW. Uh, brought up the question regarding the drainage analysis itself. Uh, so, as I stated earlier, there's an existing basin on the site that was built part of the plan that was approved um, back when the project was first uh, designed. Um, that basin is uh, quite small, um, and as part of the proposed addition, or, um, revisions, we're increasing that capacity by almost 33,000 cubic feet. Um, so the basin is significantly getting larger, which will mitigate the stormwater impacts. Um, and then our second level of review was to analyze how much impervious area is actually being developed as part of this project. Um, the total impervious area proposed by Lot 8A and 9A is approximately 16,100 square feet. Uh, when you take a, um, effectively a blunt brush approach to this, if you were to take a 100 year storm bed of seven inches of rainfall in 24 hours, that creates an additional 9,400 cubic feet of runoff going to this basin. Um, as we're increasing it by 33,000, there is sufficient capacity within this basin to keep operating at or below its original design values. So um, we can review that with DPW to get them on board with that interpretation. <coughs> and they also have further comment relative to the sewer and water connections, which have been provided cost price provision. Uh, fire department um, stated that the site is accessible for the Mass General Law for fire access and uh, protection. They had no concern. Comment number two relative to stormwater or snow removal. And comment number three is relative to um, the buildings being sprinkled and monitored by fire alarms, which are required by code, so that is being addressed by with the fire department. Um, and that is all the comments from uh, the various department heads. That being said, if there's any other questions from the board, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Are you knocking down any existing structures? Yes, there's an existing uh, garage facility located right in this location. There's a second uh, auxiliary structure. It's again, I believe, used as a um, garage facility and a missing shed that's located off in the corner here. So none of the uh, ranch style houses were built in that section. Yeah, I remember. So, there's effectively three structures that will either be removed or replicated on the site. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else? Anyone else? Matt, did you want to cover 9A? And we received all this information today and sent it out to all the department right. heads today. We just haven't heard that. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have any other responses on any of the new stuff. Before we start, can I address? Say anything? Can I address? You sure? Just quick. Sure. Yeah. We apologize for the delay in getting back. 
But I'd like to point out like the DCW, what he's asking for is it just is this a, it needs to be a statement signed and stamped by an engineer review from the drainage analysis. So we will have that. In other words, as common as not that we have a we have the stamped engineer plan that says that we had met his criteria. He wasn't you know, and so we're, we're going to go to DPW and we're going to go to conservation and get an order of conditions. So conditional on the fact that we meet their requirements. It wasn't, it wasn't like a review thing where we had to come and show them something. They just wanted it to be stamped to go to the conservation. They're going to have to approve it anyway. So I just play Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's open this one up. Uh, this is Lot 9A. So for again, for the record, Chris Anderson, Hanning Engineering. Um, this is for, again, a 21-unit uh, proposed uh, assisted living facility. Uh, the proposed project will be located within an area that's currently a lawn of space uh, along the main drive for the Brooks Pond development itself. Um, as you can see here, this is the main run of the Brooks Pond Road as it comes into the development. As you further go up, off the page over here is Central Street along with all the other newer structures being constructed at this point in time. Um, for this facility, uh, the parking will be provided immediately along the side of uh, Brooks Pond Road. Um, by uh, zoning ordinance, we're required to have 20 parking spaces. We're providing 20 spaces themselves. Um, the building will be located within this area with some clearing land around the, um, the vicinity of this um, building. As part of the overall development, again, there's an existing detention basin on the back side of the building. Uh, as part of this, we're altering some of that basin, but providing additional capacity within the system itself to ensure that this basin operates and continues as it's currently doing now. Um, additional provisions are for landscape trees around the facility, as well as all the applicable uh, water and sewer connections uh, relative to drainage. Um, all the runoff from this portion of the site gets redirected into the main trunk line within uh, the Brooks Park development, which then discharges to the basin on lot 8A. Uh, so there's no additional uh, purpose area going to uh, the detention basin immediately behind the structure itself. Um, <coughs> So uh, again, we did receive the head comments. Uh, we did provide review um, of these comments, and if the board is willing, I can go through these comments again. Um, they're pretty much a um, reiteration of Lot A's comments, but uh, are any of them different? Maybe you should just highlight the ones that are different. We'll put on the record that there's they're the same comments. Of course, uh, from the planning director, landscaping requirements, landscaping requirements, use the fire review. Uh, same comments relative to pole mounted lighting and wall pack lighting around the structure itself. Uh, we do acknowledge that we are going in front of the Conservation Commission for the additional work. Um, we've updated all the plan details for trees and labor for this one as well for the landscaping architect. Um, we provide a similar abutting property focus map, confirmed all the right of ways and easements and signage. And we did provide architectural renderings. Uh, it's pretty much the same exact structure, just rotate 90 degrees. And um, relative to special permit review, um, it's the same comment relative to traffic. Um, we're seeing that decrease in the overall traffic. Um, comment number two for special permit is again relative to the landscaping requirements that we just went over a moment ago. Um, assessor had no comment, community room, uh, relative to Port of Health. Construction sites, building inspector had no comments. Um, conservation requirements. Uh, DPW, uh, again, uh, drainage analysis I just went over a moment ago. Um, and fire department uh, reviewed the access, uh, soil removal, and the sprinkler requirements for the structure itself. So, pretty much the same exact same comments. Board? Does anyone have any board members? No. Nope. One quick thing, people. That was the location for the other buildings that were previously approved that are now being eliminated. It's a replacement of that. Okay. I'll open it up to the audience. Does anyone have any questions, comments? Okay. Anything else? I think we're good. 
Do we, um, Elizabeth, do we have everything we need? Uh, what's the board are we? It's hard. We haven't gone well, through. Well, we have the still have that other stuff. We, can, we, have we haven't had the new material reviewed yet. No, that's all this. I'm okay. That's the only thing that's outstanding. We have to continue these, right? What's that? So we have to continue. Yeah. yeah. We continue to the next July 17th. Is our next meeting? May I leave my case? Um, well, I, the reason I brought up the DBW thing was that it's clear that if I'm looking at, and I, have, I can explain the reason I'm going, is a vote approval condition. Um, I don't really, I'm flexible on the conditions. Like, for example, we have to get conservation approval without it. I understand that. DPW went so far as to say that they accepted it, provided it was stamped, planned by the engineer. The other comments are about whether the trees, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is right. critical because of what's happened in the interest rate environment. If I do not get this relatively quickly, I'm, I'm not going to get able to do this so my okay so my question is what we have what are we waiting for we have the department head comments of both of them on 9a and 8a and have the adjustments and really one that was an issue was so, always the conservation well the dpw specific oh, the dpw as well the, the stamp right? and I ha we have to go over the unit counts too and make sure that's well, we have unit counts that they have submitted have, today. Yeah, right. Right. But, but we, we haven't reviewed that. This, this multiple times on the unit counts. You can make it conditional on the unit counts being within zone. But they are, there's a stamped engineer plan that they took detailed time to make sure that. That doesn't really have an impact on this project because this one is, is doesn't have a unit count requirement. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is that we've been going back and forth years on this idea oh, on the unit yeah. the unit counts are dictated by zoning yeah, and they apply to the to the Brooks Pond development there is no unit count requirement on mm -hmm. the system mm -hmm. that's part of our zoning and so what we've done is we subtracted some land and we subtracted units and we, the remainder is left in compliance that's what the plant, that's what the building inspector reviews. That's what the engineering reviews that's on the plan. So that you can make it conditional on the unit counts being compliant with the zoning. But if this it's a real critical, it's not I, I, I had no idea this interest rate thing was going to happen. You know, that they were going to start marking them up at the speed of light. And, and right now it's going to happen again in the next meeting to get the Fed. These developments are extremely sensitive to this. It's not that I can control. So if I can, if whatever conditions that you wanted, you wanted to put in there, they would be acceptable to me. As long as they have the zoning or whatever. They've already reviewed it. We, we, we answered their review. The review answers did not get back in time for different reasons. I'm going to get into, but they did the best they could. Um, yeah. And that's the bottom line. It's just that it's going to be conditional on that. But I assure you, I think it's the, can't go forward with the conservation without the owner conditions. You can't go forward. I have no Peter. If these two buildings, it's going to take as if it's kept out, how close are you to completing the project? I mean, I can see obviously that the front that, is that question was, was raised. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm going to address that in a In fact, in the minutes, the word was used that I'm done. And, I, I, and that we had the. Um, What's that review we had? Technical review. The mayor asked, like, when is this going to be done? But here's the deal. So if what happens is down the road, if things could change with zoning, the community could change, things could happen, could change things. Yeah. I don't know. If, based on my understanding now, I, I don't see it going forward any further reasonably in the future. But I don't know 10 years from now what's going to happen. Sure. Um, but, I don't see any um, within the existing zoning today. In the existing, uh, it's, it's 
the end of it. But if something's changed, if the city wants to change the zoning, or they did something different, they could change it. Um, a lot of things happened that I didn't think, like I didn't realize the demand, how people would want such large system living units, how they um, would want to have a couple that each have their own room. They would have um, different, different things that were requested, certain things that we thought they would want but didn't want. Um, but nobody has been building housing for seniors for a long time. The, the federal government, the state government, and the private sector has done nothing. There's a huge deficit. And um, this development has been it's just filling a need that is so important. It's, it is the highest taxpayer, tax paying property in the city, and it serves a phenomenal need of population that want to live in one certain state here. And we have to be able to provide these things. Recently, you know, the, the economic things changed so dramatically, so quickly. Capital costs are the most expensive component of this development. And, and those are rising fast. And if I don't move it quickly, I won't be able to do it. And then we, we have literally hundreds of people. Um, and these are the people you want to be in the What's the board want to do? Well, you know, I know we haven't reviewed this other stuff. If we, we have a fairly accurate count here, I think it's 20 or so over the, the original proposed, but there's been shifting as well. You know, as long as conservation has to approve the open wetlands piece, right? And the agricultural piece still has to meet the requirements of the uh, the state, if yeah, we're in the state, though, right? I never touched any agricultural land. So we'll know what those numbers are. Um, and conservation could stop the whole thing for a stamp on a plan. And if they've been talking to DPW, which it seems they have, it seems they've been talking to the building inspector because he originally, uh, you know, like your calculations on well, you time. applied the wrong right thing. And, and when we explained to him what it was, yeah, it's not, a, it's not an issue now. But he, but, he, but he said that since. Yeah. Um, and if it's subject to all the conditions, and, and as well as uh, the condition that you noted, I mean, said like, like uh, Mr. Venzi stated, I think that's pretty fair myself. I have, uh, there is a need for housing. I, I just, you all, seen, you've been down there, you've seen what it is. I, it's, uh, it fills a real need. But if we, we have, if we do this for this applicant, though, you have to have a, you're setting a precedent because other applicants didn't meet their deadlines and they got continued. Well, we can we can make it subject to all the conditions being met. We can make it the review being part of those conditions, and then we haven't lost any deadline. We can just make it subject to the you know everything being in accordance with. The yeah. to, uh, what? Everyone else is going to come in here and ask them for the same, same thing. thing. This applicant has a long well, track record. I don't know that that's the case. What's that? This applicant has a long track record. I'm, I'm out. I, wouldn't, I don't know that that's the case. Like, well, well, I think Paul's. I think out. Paul's speaking and in, in being your advocate right now. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. yeah I'm just saying you have, you have a track record. So well, we can I, trust you. It's okay, different but than I, any yeah, other. But I don't even think that we need to. Be. We well, submitted it. There was there was comments. So they seen the plan. We are now answering the comments in the affirmative. Every single question that was asked. Some was significant. And so, what we're, we're doing is we're saying we're, we're com complying with the comments. I'm complying with them. It's not that this was done and they didn't review it. Every single department has reviewed it. It's some limited comments that we have answered in the affirmative, every single one of them. Now, to the extent that um, you know, I, I don't think that it's, it's carte blanche, you know, or I think that it's like we have answered it. And we have conservation commission as a contingency, GPW uh, thing as a condition. The other things are basically we are complying. If you don't comply, the plan board cannot overrule zoning. So you don't even it just it complies with zoning. That's really so that's part of this you know, subject to the condition. Anybody can't. Zoning requirements. 
it kind of kind of puts a lock on it right there, doesn't it? Are you just yes. saying it's just because? Well, uh, I mean, but Paul brings up today. a good point. But Paul brings right. up a good point. Too. Right. Yeah. So, so the the outstanding issues are the are the uh, DPW. Can I just say one thing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to identify yourself. Jim Moriarty. I'm sorry. And so I don't think I'm going to say a lot different than Peter just said. But with respect to the zoning, um, uh, I think this this application stands on meeting zoning requirements. I don't know if it's so. Obviously, the board wants to have a handle. Hey, how many units we have there? And, and that's been presented. But I can tell you just as informationally, uh, I'm sitting next to Billy Hannigan. We're in his office. And because we had had a little to 9A and 8A to create them, because the parking and he's doing a specific calculation to the adjoining units, 215 units, and it's, it's still within that. So I can, I can represent that there's, you know, personally, that there's no issue with the zoning whatsoever. Uh, this board's a very experienced board, uh, and you know, you don't usually talk about this, but Billy Hannigan makes sure to tell me he apologized, but I think everybody knows you know, the tragedy in his life, and the, uh, you know, the information didn't get to the board until noonish, and obviously that's not the preferred course of action for a submit over a project like this, but, you know, that was the situation. So, hopefully that the board would think that the, nonetheless, that the department comments have been reviewed by us and, and responded to appropriately and then you have the last two issues with respect to the representation of DPW obviously the engineer would stamp that saying yet yeah, you know with proper recitation and the other condition would be that uh, we certainly have to meet all conditions the conservation commission and so I think that's what we're hoping for and I would also note that because this project is located within jurisdiction areas of the Conservation Commission, the stormwater ordinance that the City of Lumsier has instituted lately is applied to this project because it is within jurisdictional areas. And that also doesn't devolve from the fact that state law, regardless of project or form or fashion, is subject to stormwater management. So we will have to be doing um, the same review that was provided within our response with the Conservation Commission to show them that we are in compliance with the so that the little side, additional side piece that, again, like what was it reiterated, conservation still has their shot at the, the board here on this one as well, and stormwater does fall under their purview as part of the project. Okay. So I just, I just before, in the event there's a motion to close the hearing, I just want to make sure everything's been discussed and that we know the outstanding issues are the, is the is about the. Um, the drainage, anal drainage analysis and the uh, via the DPW approval from the conservation. A uh, unit count, uh, or it's, you know, total yeah, unit, unit zone. zone. Oh, by Elizabeth zone. Or by zone? Unit well, count. it's got to be. So right, we'll have yeah. Elizabeth. Well, we'll have Elizabeth review it. Well, I mean, if we have, on the condition, right? if we're having DPW ensuring that. There's no the, increase to the impervious. There's no increase to the imp, uh, impervious surface, right. and then we we yeah, and it's subject on the conservation commission's approval of the project. We're also going to include the planning department's satisfaction of the of the unit count. Mm -hmm. Are there anything? Are there any other? And I would just do the catch-all with any other. A, any yeah. other? Yeah. Okay. Comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you do the catch-all, I'm just curious if it's a little different. Do you want me to wait until I get all the comments back from departments and then add them into the decision? So I guess that's where I'm confused. When you say add, I, I thought we had all I the comments. We well, we sent, we sent, we sent we out the new, new materials comments. to the departments to confirm okay. what comments are outstanding. Well, that's right. But, yeah. but this, I mean, this says that the building inspector, right? I don't know. Well, we have the well, we have the representation yeah. from the from the developer that they're going to comply with all the comments. Yes. But when I write my notice of decision, I like to list Beautiful. each comment that's outstanding. Like. I don't, well, I don't know. Like, we have an answer to every comment. Right. Every comment. For example. So the only ones that would be outstanding would be the ones that it's the. That they they raise an additional saying, question based on wait. what they've already raised, if they raise an additional question, that would be subject to one of the conditions. Well, 
So when I write my notice of decision, I have to kind of not finish it until I get those comments back. Right. And then I can add those comments in. Yep. 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 This is a little different. I've never done this yep. before. Yep. Including the conservation? I think conservation just say pending. Right. Or they approved approved yeah. Any approval they would just be DPW and then the others. They should all be back DPW, by Friday. Uh, the engineering plan being they should be back by Friday. And there's a, an appeal period, period anyway, so yeah. you'd be able to. And Friday is sufficient time for you to do what you're up to. Um, yeah, I was, I was hoping for. I'm, I'm out a, Friday. A vote based on. The two comments yep. uh, that we've satisfied the DPW drainage calculation and en damp engineering plan, and the um, conservation order, it's subject to this conservation order conditions. Subject after that, everything is relative to zoning, like or right. Right, like th those things are, are not. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't approve a two-family home in single-family zone, anyways. Like the idea is, is that the zoning requirements, the number of units that are remaining on the site, and all the other stuff, those are the zoning issues. So the only two things are, and I use the language of the DPW, that they're just looking for a stamped engineered plan from the, from the so I'm sure Panigan will come back and meet with the city and they'll work out whatever they had to do with their, like I did read the zoning calculations, the actual, I don't know, the deals, so, but the idea is that the, the storm runoff would be lower, the, the, um, the, the actual height and the pension basins, etc. cetera. Um, so that everything, um, you know, would be worked out between them. Meanwhile, we still have to, what he pointed out, is we've got to go back, we're going to go before conservation, in which all those analysis will have to be presented all over again to the DPW, review them all over again, They're independently reviewed anyway. He didn't say he needed to review it. He just said he needed a stamp plan. Right. And then, so I'm just saying those two conditions. The other conditions, um, you know, um, are things that can be reviewed by the board. So, right. do, do we have a motion? Yeah. Does anyone object? So I'll move to close the hearing. No, we'll find out. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. So I'll move to close the hearing. Close okay. um, the 6.30. The 6.30. 6 yeah, we have to do them one at a time. Yep, second. So I have a motion made the second to close the 6.30 public informational meeting for the site plan itself for parcel 8A. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move to close the 6.31 plan. Second. So I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing for the special permit on the use of um, Brooks Pond Road, parcel 8A. Um, motion made by Paul. Motion by Paul, second by, second by Pat. Pat. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. I move to close the 638 here. Right. Special, uh, site plan. And that's a public information meeting for the site plan application for 9A. <coughs> Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And again, we move to close the 640 hearing for a special permit for use. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Let's so open the 645 public information meeting for 37 Carter Street, map 47, parcels 1 and 2, for Lemonster Emergency Management Parking Plan. by Arthur Elko. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Uh, so this is their existing building at 37 Carter Street. Uh, many of you uh, may know it was the former site of the Tri-Centennial Chip Factory. 
Uh, so also on site was a house and shed, which have since been removed. This is all existing conditions, by the way. Um, so house and shed have been, since been removed on site. Historically, the edge of pavement ran up this line and wrapped around uh, to the other side of the building. Currently, uh, the pavement um, still exists in this area, but as you move towards the rear, um, it moves to gravel and broken pavement. Uh, in the area uh, that the house and shed, and, and shed uh, once stood is now mostly dirt uh, with some grass areas uh, closer to the fence. Uh, Parking-wise, <clears throat> there are currently um, five dedicated spaces um, for parking off Carter Street in front of the building here, uh, four normal size uh, spaces and one handicap. Um, and so something that Arthur has expressed to us is the need for more parking. Um, when they have events, uh, everyone tends to park on the street, which really clogs up uh, Carter Street. If, if, if I could just offer some context on that. Uh, name and you said your name already, right? Yes, uh, name is Arthur Robitaille, and I'm here as the director of the City Department of Leinster Emergency Management. And um, just again, uh, to expand on that in context, we have uh, classes and training ongoing uh, with us, with emergency medical training, uh, and with various other departments that meet there five days a week, um, sometimes also on weekends during the day and then in the evening. So this time of evening, for example, we typically have some sort of medical or first aid training going on there um, up until about 9.30 at night. Uh, with our existing parking lot situation and when, um, as we stated, that there was an old house and a uh, garage that we've torn down, but it's really just sort of um, a beat up area. It's dirt, it's broken pavement and so forth, and people can't park there. So they end up parking on the street and they fill that entire block. In fact, we received phone calls from the neighbors, understandably, because we're sort of crowding on them. And if they're having um, visitors or friends over or just plain old out in their yard and so forth, yeah. our, our vehicles are all up and down the street. What the parking lot proposal will do is pave this area that the city already owns. And we can walk you through the engineering for it, but pave this area, landscape this area, and take this parking off of the street, put it into a parking lot on land that the city already owns in the proper venue. In other words, um, we've addressed lighting, landscaping, um, water, storm water, et cetera. Uh, so that's just the overall context of where we're going with this. And I have the proposed site plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So uh, we're proposing a parking lot. Um, everything in brown is a uh, proposed pavement. Uh, we're proposing 16 spaces, uh, which will go along with the existing five to make 21 total spaces. Um, everything in light green uh, will be the grass area, and then the dark green is uh, landscaped areas. Uh, we have three proposed maple trees, and then uh, the rest of the dark green uh, hatched areas will be a mix of native plants and bushes. <clears throat> That'd be a nice change, really. It, it will be, yeah. It's kind of a dust bowl right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dust bowl and beat up. And um, so and it'll get, as we stated, it'll get all the parking off the off the street yeah. um, and um, kind of back where, where where it should be. So uh, no, no curb cut there? Is this, this existing? Is there an entryway right there? Yeah, so this is existing. Oh. Off of a car street. Well, it took you so long. <laughs> I, I have the same question. So I was done. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right. Um, we are trying to wait for some trees to play themselves yeah. So this is just a good word. Usually it's weeds. Right. Uh, it's cool. yeah. no, no entryway or anything? I'm just wondering uh, There's no a garage door. Yeah. Um, our director believed he would say there would be trucks. Um, Small yes. trucks turning around, accessing that door? Yes, we have, um, so Lemster Fire Department, they have the regional um, hazard response vehicle there out of one vehicle bay, then we have another 10 vehicles coming out of another vehicle bay. That upper part of the parking lot where you see 
uh, beyond that first island. That's the area which will be for turning around and for backing up our vehicles. We back our vehicles into uh, the vehicle bay, as does the fire department there. Okay. So that whole area there will be for turning around and, and backing up. And the area closer to the front to Carter Street is uh, where the parking spots will be. Um, and how about your snow? So storage, uh, we have this area dedicated to that. Um, they met the requirements. Which, yeah. And it's not on the plan, right? Yep. And, yeah. and there's no alteration to the existing building? No. No, there's not. So okay. all the department heads will visit. Yeah. As, as Paul said, all the department heads, uh, conservation is just requesting native plants and uh, fire, fire approves, health approves, just for the record. Assessors approve, building approves, public works approve, Lemonster PD approves. What? Emergency yeah. management approves. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's good. Any other questions from the board? No. I'll open up to the audience. Anyone have any questions, comments? Yes, Council. Uh, Clay Freya, Wilmington Council uh, at large. 117 W Drive, Wilmington. Um, just to speak in support, um, the Mer that facility has become a Northwest Oconee. Um, it, it's just revered by all the neighboring communities, and they do a lot of it, a lot of functions there, a lot of training uh, in cooperation with the police and fire and other emergency management. So. Um, that will be a relief to the neighborhood to at least be able to get those cars off the road. Um, I think there'll still be cars on the road, but it won't be to the uh, to the extent uh, that that can alleviate some of the pressures there. So I'll, I speak in support of that. Great. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else? Questions? Comments? Yeah, I move to close the hearing. Second. All right. Motion made and second to close the hearing. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Let's go to the regular meeting. Call to order. Patrick Perla. Here. Paul Weiser. Here. John Souza. Excuse. Sal Chicone. Here. Tom Kierkin. Here. Jason Paré. Here. Dean Villar. Here. Carol Torres. Here. 2.0 visit minutes of previous meeting, May 15th. I need to approve the minutes of May 15th. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? All those in favor to approve the May 15th minutes? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. 3.0. Plan submitted ANR for 143, 150, 178 Jocelyn. Map 576, parcel 6. Map 577, parcels 10 and 11. from Haley Ward. The address may look familiar. It's been here yeah. last week. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> the, APR has, <clears throat> the APR has forced the applicant to conform to the original agreement. So that's what these, they were, they wanted to change some the bond. configuration of the lines. So that's what this is. So, see where the, where are the changes here? So before, yep. we had to come out, it went around this. Oh, right, 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 right. Yep. And it came back here. Yep. So they just put a straight line across. And they shifted, this was shifted, so they went to the angle point of the street, yeah. and came out and around. They need to stay there. They're still trying to negotiate, but yep. the original areas that were excluded in the API agreement are these three, per a sketch um, that was filed. Right. So what are we approving? It is approved. Lot one and lot two. Lots. That's coming out of larger parcels on both sides of the road, which because of the size, I put in a request for a waiver for the listing meeting cars. Right, I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, uh, uh, so motion to endorse. Second. Jason, any questions? We're, we're, we're moving lines around to maintain the, the lot size. And they, they both exceed the, yeah. the requirement. The, Configuration is more because they have an API restriction on the that arms. Right. So the original agreement, these were configurations of the lots. They were trying to alter them a little from the agreement and the API was not agreeing with what happened. So they're going to 
I have a motion to endorse and a second. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, for the vote, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Old business non, new business. Start with 5.1, site plan application for Brooks Pond Road um, for parcel 8A. Remember the waiver request. I'm going to start with the Welcome. waivers. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. I move we waive the requirement for a landscape architect. Second. Is that the only one? It's the only one of both. Yeah. Right. This is all mentioned. 8A. 8A. Okay. Motion made to approve the waiver for the landscape architect. Is that the only one? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion for the plan itself? I move we approve the plan conditioned on approval by the Conservation Commission and satisfactory mm -hmm. the conditions of the unit. What about the unit count? And the unit. And the planning director verified the unit sale. And, uh, any and any other. Uh, subject to any other conditions that may arise. In the department heads. Right. For the. For the well, we're doing the recovery of the review right now. That may arise based on the new. Right. Based on your own. Expect nothing. Analysis or on the Including. Do you have to do a certificate of occupancy? And that should pass conservation. That should give you a clear path. At least. And the planning director to review the conditions prior to see right. them. Yes. As always. Yes. Correct. Okay. I'll second that. Motion made the second to approve the site plan application for 8A with the conditions as noted. And Stephanie, you have all those? I have all. And the waiver. And the waiver. Okay. Motion second made. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. 5.2 for the special permit for the use on parcel 8A. Same motion. Same motion, same conditions. So, oh, we yeah, do the waiver. The waiver. Oh, waiver. 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 Oh, waiver first. Oh, so motion to approve the waiver for the special permit. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion on the Permit itself. The same motion with the same conditions. Motion made. Motion made. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. All those opposed. Motion carries. Okay. So I move to approve a waiver for the landscape architect for 9A for 5.3. Okay, for the site plan application. All those in favor. Aye. 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 All those opposed. Oh, we didn't get a second. Oh, second. Oh, okay, sorry. Aye. Second. Aye. Thanks, son. Motion made, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And now they have the same motion with the same conditions for dining. Uh, for the site plan application, all the, uh, motion made, second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And now 5.4 for the special permit, again, the waiver for the landscape architect. Same second. Motion made to approve the waiver. And with the second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And then finally, for 5.4, special permit, the same uh, conditions, same motion. Second. Same way. Motion made second for the special permit for the use of 9A. All those in, with the same conditions, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, let's go to 5.5. Site plan application for 37 Carter Street. What are you doing on the motion to approve? Nothing. Uh, Second. Motion, motion to approve. Across the street. Oh, okay. I, 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 I don't have so. But you still hold it, right? I do. I do. I will be very to see. I don't have to ask him. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, did you five, five, right? five, five, site plan application for 37 Carter Street for parcels one and two. Motion to approve. There's a waiver. Second. There's a waiver. A waiver. Oh, the waiver for the uh, landscape. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, motion to uh, approve the waiver. 
Second. We, motion made and second to approve the waiver. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to approve uh, the, the parking plan. So with the, an application. With, with the, the planning director to with, uh, review the conditions correct. prior and, to CFO. Yes. And with all department uh, heads here, it's just the landscape. It's just the landscape. Uh, well, land. Yes. So conservation. Conservation, yeah. Motion made, second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. 6.0 communications. Want to choose it? Regional Planning Commission or to appoint representative for the next fiscal term. Who's the, who's the rep now? <laughs> How about doing the double? <laughs> <You're talking laughs> <on that. laughs> we don't know the term limits here, so you should go again. There's no term limits. I'll go again. That's not a problem. All right. Look at that. Thank you. I'll buy you a drink. That's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Motion to have nothing to do. <laughs> Motion to reappoint Team Valier as the representative. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. Motion made second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those Aye. opposed? Motion carries. 6.2 more. Monitors at Joint Transportation Committee Representative Board appointed our planning director as representative for this class. This uh, from July twenty for the coming, yeah, for the coming yeah, this year. Yeah. It's just this is the second reading of it, right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Motion yeah. to approve. Motion made. Second. 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 All those in favor. Point. Right. 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 It has to be on the next agenda too. Okay. Three times in a row. Uh, the second All right. Director's okay. report. Um, we're off the hook today. I don't have any. All questions. right. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to go into executive uh, yeah, session? Yeah, we do. So, uh, do you need to read the You have to, I'll you have to yes, got it. you got, got it. it? I do. And I make a motion that the planning board enter executive session session on the general laws, chapter 30A, section 21A3. After he's done. To discuss strategy with respect to threatened litigation regarding New England Land Company, LLC, and the work performed at Sawyer Way. It's an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the town, as the chair declares. So that's my motion. Okay, and we're not going to reconvene. Oh, excuse me, and we will not be reconvening the meeting, the regular planning board meeting, after uh, the executive session. Okay, that's the motion. Second. I have a second? Second. Motion made and second, and we need a roll call vote. Yes. All those in favor? Patrick Perla. Yes. Paul Weiser. Yes. John Souza. Excuse. Dr. Koenig. Yes. Tom Kerrigan. Yes. Jason Perez. Yes. Dean Bayer. Yes. Kerrigan Torrioso. Yes. Dear Clark. Okay.